Oh, if only we had instant replay. Looking back at the 1979 Sugar Bowl, the goal line stand between Alabama and Penn State. Let's get into it. Woo! Ballard Sports Media. Uh, coming at you today with a college football flashback video. Um, I don't do these that often. And I guess the reason why is because of the process. This is number five for me. The goal line stand between Alabama and Penn State, the 1979 Sugar Bowl. We're going to take a quick in-depth look at that. Um, and the reason why, I, I'll say this real quick. I don't do these that often. And the reason why, I guess, is because you got to understand something. If you're going to review a college football game, or any game, I don't care what sport it is, go back to the old softball game, soccer, you know, World Series, or NBA, or whatever it is, you got to go back and do the research, make sure you get it right. Um, and it takes time. It takes time. You got to figure out, okay, what game do you want to do? Is it worth reviewing? Um, you know, and then go watch it. Even if you've seen it many, many times, go back and watch it. Make sure you didn't miss anything. Um, I saw this, I mean, I've seen the play or whatever a few times, but I went back and I actually watched this game, like, maybe one or two different times. Um, and again, this is college football flashback number five, and, uh, real quick before I get into it, do me a favor, man, hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you're new to the channel, uh, and of course, as always, comment. I'll probably be premiering this, you can comment on the premiere or live chat, whatever, um, as you watch this video. But, uh, yeah, so this, this one's, um, this one's special. This is my first Alabama, um, no, actually, it, it's not. Uh, I did do, before the Georgia game last year, I went back and looked at the last time they met in Tuscaloosa, because it was the first time they met since 2007, so I looked at that one. So, it's not my first, uh, Bama flashback. It's also not my first Penn State flashback, if you remember the first one I did was um, the 19, I think it was 1987, 86 Fiesta Bowl with Penn State and Miami, right? Um, so I've done one for Penn State and Alabama, but I'm going to do this one, man. I've been waiting on this one for a while. I've been working on it, and I want to get it for you guys. Let's get into it. 1979 Sugar Bowl, right? It was to close out the 1978 season, January 1st, 1979. The 45th ever Sugar Bowl. It was the championship at the time. Um, number one Penn State comes in 11-0 undefeated against number two Alabama, who was 10-1. Lost to USC in week three of the 78 football season. This was the national championship. It was two teams, obviously. So you have Penn State, you had Alabama. This game... And I know if you go back and look at um, the first one I did with Miami and Penn State, you know, I called it Defense Wins Championships. That game proved it. This one did too. There's been a lot of championships where defense has proven to win it. I know today we like to look at it as an offensive era where you just got to score because you got to keep up with everybody else and what Clemson's doing with Trevor Lawrence. I know he's with the Jags now, but even going forward with DJ and you got Bryce Young coming in. I mean, there's going to be a lot of great quarterbacks Next season, we're just in an offensive era now. This was the 70s and the 80s, and, and even in like the 60s, since like the beginning, right? We've always really had a defensive era. Um, And this was just one of those games that proved it. And it, it, let's just dive back into it real quick. So, January 1st, 1979, closing out the 78 season, the national championship. The two best coaches at the time in college football which are still two of the best in history, especially Paul Bear Bryant. Joe Paterno, uh, the best ever Penn State uh, football coach, um, and probably the second or third best, or I don't know, I guess Nick Saban's there, unless you want to count him passing Bear Bryant as the best ever coach, um, then Bear Bryant would be two. I would definitely say, you know, the third or fourth best coach would be Joe Paterno. Called him Joe Pa, you know, as a nickname. And, of course, Paul Bear Bryant. The two best coaches in football at the time. And, obviously, like I just mentioned, uh, definitely uh, two of the best in history. It was the debut of Alabama's mascot, 
Big Al, the elephant mascot uh, at the time, too. Just throw that fun fact in there. Alabama in this game was a one-point favorite going into it, right? So the odds favored Alabama. They liked them, but obviously it was close. And the defenses were just so spot on. It was great offense, too. Seriously. I'm telling you. Man, it was really, really great. Um, it was just a great game. And I'm going to show you something here. Um, some of this, I'm going to read some stats here. This according to the AllStateSugarBowl.org. Um, of course, you could go. It wasn't the AllState Sugar Bowl back then. They didn't really have sponsors, I don't think. If, I, if I'm not mistaken, they didn't have sponsors for bowl games. So it was really just the Sugar Bowl. Um, and keep your eye on Barry Krause, linebacker at Alabama. We'll get to him later. Let's look at some stats real quick. Um, both of these teams, it was so neck and neck and close, right? Um, both teams got 12 first downs in the game. Oh, 12 first downs for each team. That's good, right? Let's keep going. 60 times Alabama rushed the ball. Got 208 rushing yards in the game. Penn State rushed 38 times, 19 yards. Alabama in passing, 8 of 15 with two interceptions. Um, Penn State, 15 of 34 with four interceptions. I hope I'm reading all of this right, too. Um, yes, I am. Okay. Uh, 91 passing yards for Alabama. Penn State, however, had 163 passing yards. That's important to know. Um, total offense. Let's see. 75 offensive plays for Alabama. 299 yards, just short of 300-yard game. 68 plays for Penn State on offense. 182 yards. Um, both teams punting... 10 times in the game, and both averaged about 38, 39 yards in total punting yards. Penn State had two fumbles in the game, didn't lose a single punt, uh, fumble. Alabama had two fumbles, lost one of them. 11 penalties for Alabama for 75 yards. Eight penalties for Penn State for 51 yards, right? So what are we seeing here? Both teams had 12 first downs. Um... Total offensive yards and plays, Alabama, right? They had more time of possession and more offense on the field and had more yardage, right? Um, but they had they also had more penalties in the game. They also had um they they ran the ball better. They didn't pass as good as Penn State did, right? Their quarterback at the time, the quarterback matchup was Chuck Fusina of Penn State versus Jeff Rutledge of Alabama at the time in this game, in the 79 Sugar Bowl. Rutledge was 8 of 15 with two interceptions um, for 91 yards and a touchdown. Chuck Fusina definitely outperformed Rutledge. 15 of 34 with four interceptions. Um... Let me see. Yes, four interceptions and 163 yards and a touchdown, right? And so on. So we're seeing here that um, Penn State is obviously outperforming Alabama offensively, right? Like on paper, you look at it and you look at offense and you say, Penn State should have won this game offensively, right? But it was one of those, like there were big plays in the game. For both teams. I mean, Alabama has a big place too, right? Um, but it came down to defense. It came down to big stops on third down. It came down to getting in the red zone and not being able to finish drives. Penn State struggled to do that. Alabama too. Um, so, of course, we have two great teams. Bama and Penn State. Two iconic, legendary coaches in Bear Bryant and Joe Paterno. Joe Pa, they called him. His nickname. And, of course, Paul Bear Bryant. And despite being an underdog in this game, 
Penn State was undefeated. They were clearly the team to beat that season, and they were the top-ranked team. But the odds favored Alabama, who had a loss to USC in Week 3. We already covered that a little bit. Um, It started out, Bama got the ball to start the game, and they started off running the ball, running the ball, a passing play or two. Penn State's defense would prevail. They would not quit and give up. They held Bama to a punt. Penn State's opening drive was also a three and out. And 90% of the entire game, it was three and out, right? The big difference was on third downs, right? You'll hear Nick Saban talk about after a a, a loss at Bama, saying our biggest mistake was not getting off the field on third down when it came to defensive stops. We had third down situations to maybe close a drive, force a field goal, force a punt, get a turnover. But we couldn't give up uh, the field on, we, we kept giving it up on third down. That's what happened in this game. Or, I guess the opposite. You know, the defenses held them and were able to get off the field on third down. And we saw punt, 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 right? Um, so, and it was it was just a slow game. It was interesting, though. If you want to go back and watch this, it is on YouTube. That's how I went back and I saw it. Um... So it it just was it was a 7 nothing lead at halftime Alabama and it was 8 seconds left in the second quarter before half where Jeff Rutledge stepped back through a 30 yard touchdown to the tight end Bruce Bolton who caught it obviously like I just said 8 seconds left in the half and then um in the third quarter Penn State got the ball back um, Chuck Fusina had it, got it to the, to the, um, uh, receiver, Scott Fitzke, um, who had the lone touchdown for Penn State. Fitzke, uh, ended up having three catches in the game for 38 yards, um, counting that touchdown. Uh, the lead receivers for the game, Bruce Bolton, for Alabama, two catches for 46 yards with one touchdown. Uh, and for Penn State, Mike Gunman, uh, five of 59. No touchdown for him. <sighs> so, let's see, 17-yard pass. Chuck Vecino, Scott Fitzke in the third. Okay. 62-yard punt return after that, eventually, would... Um, so... They tied it up with a 17-yard touchdown play, Chuck Fusina, Scott Fitzke, right? But a little later on in the third quarter, a 62-yard punt return um, by Alabama player Lone Eichner um, would help set up great field position, and um, you would have uh, Major Ogil Ogvi. I think is how you say that. He got an eight-yard touchdown pass, and that made that broke the tie, made it fourteen to seven, right? And, and and the fourth quarter was where the goal line stand happened. Nittany Lions, um, was seven with, with like eight minutes left in the game, right? The Lions have the ball. <sighs> they had a chance, right? They're down at the nineteen-yard line. Um, or I'm sorry, Alabama had the ball here, but the Lions had a defensive back named Joe Laley. He recovers a fumble by Rutledge, um, for Alabama, and it sets him up in good field position, or, well, I guess it's not if you're on the opponent's, uh, 19-yard line, right? Or no, the opponent's 19-yard line would be a pretty good field position because you got to think they're defending that. So, yeah, on, on defense. So, yeah, it was Alabama who wasn't in much good field position. But Penn State gets it back on the 19-yard line. Okay, next play, first play of this next drive. Matt Suey, the fullback, ran 11 yards, got a first down at the Bama 8. Right? And then the fullback, Mike Gunman. Right? He gets a pitch. Got two yards to the six-yard line. Then, Chuck Fusina, the quarterback, 
Second down, he steps back, dropped back, got a pass off to uh, Scott Fitzke, who was on the right sideline. He caught it at the one. He was slammed out of bounds by Don McNeil, the corner for Alabama, who was there just in time to prevent a touchdown. This is where it gets interesting, folks. You have the goal line stand. You're there at the one. You just had a chance, but Bama's defense was able to hold him out right there. Right? Man, it was a great play. Penn State was getting so hyped up. They were getting ready. Right? Okay. <sighs> Third down. Matt Suey would hand it off to Mike Gunman. And he'd be stopped. Linebacker Rich Wingo's there to make it. Fourth down, this was it. Barry Krause. Barry Krause, the Bama linebacker's there. Right? He's looking at him. Gunman's looking at him. Krause is looking at Gunman. Gunman gets the ball. He hands it off. And he stopped. He stopped. Barry Krause stood that man. And that is what we call a goal line stand, people. They had it down there. Oh, sorry about that. They had it down there. Within like the five yard line. Play after play just can't get it in. Right? Kept running and kept running. He kind of jumped there too. He he jumped. In fact, take a look real quick um, at the play they call the goal line stand. Take a quick look. Number two, everything could be hanging on. Fourth and nine are going ahead for Penn State. 19 game win streak, only undefeated team in the country, ranked number one in the nation, Alabama ranked number two, everything could be hanging on, fourth and goal with a half a yard, Gooman, he didn't make it, Penn State away from a half a yard, an Alabama man is Krauss who is shaking and down on the field right now, Keith, the turn on it, that it was close. It was very, very close, right? And I've shout out to my uh, grandmother who watches uh, my channel on here, uh, Penn State fan. She's the one that told me about this game and everything. This was before my time. She says up and down, and I'm not going to argue this. I'm not going to argue because when I watch this play, it does look like it barely passes the goal line. Like you know how today, the only the tip of the ball had to uh, cross the plane. I don't know if it was like that back in 79, but if you go back and you watch it, it looks like, it looks like it broke the plane. And my grandmother will tell me, if only for instant replay. If we had had the instant replay and the pylon cams that we had today, man, would it have been the year for Penn State. I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to... I, I, I kind of agree, because I, I kind of got to give Penn State some some uh, some props. You know, the ball was in the hands of the running back, and um, I mean, it looked like it broke the plane. It j just did, but you know, we'll never really know. They're not going to go back to that game. You know, they're, they're not going to go back, find a way to put instant replay in it, and, and, and boom! Change of plans. Change of the outcome. Tie it up at 14. No. Unfortunately for Penn State, they ended up losing. Had they had instant replay, though, it who knows what could have been for Joe Paterno and the Nittany Lions. But ultimately... In the end, Alabama prevails 14-7. to seven, And that is what we call the goal line stand, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, that's going to do it for this College Football Flashback video. Thanks so much for watching and tuning in today. I really appreciate it, man. Hey, hit that thumbs up on your way out. Hit the subscribe button if you're new to the channel. I love each and every one of you guys. It kind of sucks putting all these together. It's also fun, though. I love college football. I love learning about watching and seeing old college football games. And uh, this one was definitely a big one. This was a championship. Two heavyweight teams and coaches. We're t remember, we talked Bear Bryant, 
and Joe Paterno were the top two guys at the time. Kind of like how Nick Saban and Dabo are today, you know. But back then in the 70s and, you know, the 60s, it was Paterno at Penn State and it was Bear Bryant uh, at Alabama. And I finally got to go head to head in 1979. And there we had the goal line stand. So I appreciate everyone for tuning in and watching. Hey, if there's a college football game you want me to review from a long time ago, I tried to, at least for right now, not do anything too recent. Um, so if you know a game from like the 90s or whatever, maybe even early 2000s, I already did like the 2002 Bluegrass Miracle with LSU and Kentucky, something around that time. Please let me know, man. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Bama's got Miami week one. I keep talking about how I'm going to mess with Miami fans a little bit. Maybe I'll do the 1992-93 championship the last time those two teams met. So, But you guys let me know down below what you would like to see me review. I will be more than happy to check it out. I love each and every one of you. I hope everyone has an awesome day and a blessed week ahead. Keep your eyes up. Look up. Jesus loves you. Remember that. Have a great day. God bless. And roll tide roll. I love you guys. Fellow Sports Media checking out. Woo! Roll time. Thank you.